A question that I'm often asked is, what microphone do you actually use and could you recommend a cheap microphone for me to buy? The answer to which microphone I use is quickly answered. It's the Shure SM58. However, the question of which microphone you should buy is a bit more complicated because I wouldn't necessarily recommend this microphone. And it just highly depends on what you want to use the microphone for. So in this video, I will introduce you to three different microphone categories, explain what each one does and when it's best to use them and why my microphone doesn't fall into any of these three categories. You may know those strange microphones that are held over actors with a long pole from behind the scenes footage. Those are usually so-called boom mics. Those are usually directional microphones. You may also know some vloggers who have a microphone directly on top of their camera. Those are also usually directional microphones. Now, why are they called directional microphones? Quite simply, they are designed to pick up sound from a specific direction. And that's very practical when you are recording in an environment where there are a lot of background noises coming from different directions that you don't want to record. For example, for vloggers who are out and about in the city, a directional microphone would be the right choice to record your voice specifically, but not the street noise possible disadvantages of directional microphones are that they are very susceptible to wind. So if you are outside, you should always use such a little thing, which is called a dead cat. Also, the microphone should ideally move together with you. If you are already moving camera and microphone together, for example, because you're vlogging, that's not a problem. But if camera and microphone are in a fixed position and I move away from them, then the sound quality gets really, really bad. Because the most important rule when recording sound is get your microphone as close as possible to your sound source. One possible solution to this problem is provided by the next category of microphones. But before we get there, here are two suggestions for directional microphones under 100 and 300 euros, depending on how much you're willing to spend. I personally work a lot with the Rode VideoMic Mini and really, really love this thing. Lavalier microphones or clip-on microphones are these beautiful small microphones that, as the name suggests, you can simply clip on. And that brings a whole lot of advantages because we can now solve the problem that we can move completely freely and the sound quality always remains exactly the same. And even with clip-on microphones, we have the advantage that ambient noise is not picked up as strongly, but this is not due to a directional factor, but simply because the microphone is very close to our mouth. And all possible interfering noises are further away from it. Clip-on microphones are therefore incredibly suitable for recording speech in situations where you have to move a lot. And they are therefore often used in TV shows. For example, like, I don't know, a cooking show where the chef moves around a lot and it would be a bit stressful to have someone running around with a boom mic all the time. This is not impossible. Disadvantages of clip-on microphones? Well, they are just very small. And the smaller they are, the more difficult it is to achieve good sound quality simply because the diagram is smaller. Another disadvantage is that you either have to record the sound separately, for example, by directing it into your mobile phone, or you need a radio link that transports the sound to your camera via radio. And that usually becomes expensive again. Of course, I also have two concrete recommendations for you here. By the way, you can find a link to all recommendations in the video description below. And while you are already down there, why not leave a like? Now let's move on to the last and largest category, studio microphones. You will usually only find those microphones in use in a studio or indoors because they are relatively large and therefore a bit impractical to carry around. However, in terms of sound quality, they are by far the best. For this reason, these microphones are traditionally used, for example, for studio vocal recordings or for podcasts or by streamers and so on. Due to their large diagram, these microphones simply have a very high sensitivity and can also record fine nuances in very quiet tones. The disadvantage of this is, of course, that if you are in an environment where there are a lot of background noises, the microphone will also pick up all of these background noises. Another disadvantage is that large studio microphones often require additional power, which is referred to as phantom power, and therefore oftentimes do not have a regular microphone connector, but such a huge XLR connector instead. And then of course you need a suitable recording device or an interface to actually record the sound. And here are again two recommendations for you if you want to actually buy a large studio microphone. But what about my microphone, the Shure SM58? This is actually a stage microphone and not really designed for video recordings. In terms of categories, it falls somewhere between a directional microphone and a studio microphone because it has a directional factor to specifically record the speaker or singer on stage and not the noise from the audience, but it also has a relatively large diagram and is therefore also suitable, for example, for singing. In fact, the SM58 is probably the most famous stage microphone ever. If you pay attention, you'll suddenly see it on almost every stage. But why on earth am I using a stage microphone for my videos? 
Well, because I had it lying around. Many, many years ago, I sang in a band and I got this microphone back then and I still have it. And it is still very, very good.